I found this piece of dryer venting at the reuse store. I'm going to start by slicing it down the middle. I'm going to go ahead and cut off a section. With this end cut off, I want to flatten it out. I want to turn them into wings. I'm going to make two different sizes. I'm going to lightly brush on some blue paint to the ends, some sage green to the middles, and then some cream paint to the tips. I'm going to do both sides of the spindle. I'm going to add some sage green. I'm going to cover the entire spindle now with this pearl glaze. I'm just going to use some small nails and a hammer to hold all four wings in place. The final thing I need to do is attach a small head. I love how fun this giant dragonfly is. It adds such a colorful touch to the fence and was so easy to make. We'll start by giving this old fence a quick sanding and then brush the dust off and we'll be ready for stenciling. Got a dense foam roller. Offload the roller so there won't be too much paint. Okay, when you're stenciling, try to use a nice even pressure. And now you can remove the stencil. Randomly place your next stencil and just continue. Okay, I've got the stem stencil placed. So now we're gonna use the leaf stencil. I pre-place my stencils to knock it right out. What do you think of this project? It turned out great and it's an easy one for first time stencilers. All you need is a stack of wood paint stirrers. It's all laid out. I'm going to go ahead and paint them a beautiful yellow color. Now that my paint sticks are all ready, it's time to start putting them together to add some wood glue in between the joints. I love this new piece of beehive art. I can't wait to see what it looks like when the plants start growing. Okay, so first stage of this is for me to get this paint, this fence completely painted. I have got these melamine plastic plates I just picked up at the dollar store. I've also got a couple of these larger silver colored plates. That's isopropyl alcohol. I've just cleaned the plate with that. I'm going to take a little bit out of alcohol here. I'm just going to squirt it onto the plate and then I've got these really lovely colors. I'm going to drop a little bit on here and I'm just going to move this around a bit to start with. Alcohol on there. There we go. Here we go. A little bit more of that. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun. I'm just going to go around and around in circles and just see if we can get some nice kind of edges. Okay, now because this is alcohol ink, I'm actually going to seal it with this K-Mar varnish. The second version that I'm going to do on these little plates is I'm actually going to use these stick and style stencils. This I've already coated with a second coat of paint. Okay, let's take this stencil off and see how it looks. Our third technique that we're going to create on these plates is going to be, we're going to go full Jackson Pollock. Next up, we're going to use this silver bullet. Exactly the same. We can do that on one of our smaller plates. So let's see what it looks like now that I've hung them all up. I picked up three of these styrofoam balls when I was at the dollar store and I'm going to put one of these sticks in each of the balls. And there we go. It's as easy as that. So I want to go ahead and paint each of these balls and I'm going to cover this in glue first. I've got a whole bunch of different colors of glitter here that I just picked up at the dollar store. Just lightly smush it in there. So I'm going to take that glued side and just start rolling it. And I'm going to cover this ball with these beautiful glass rocks. Give them a little spray with a, a clear top coat. These garden gazing balls were so easy to make with just a few supplies from the dollar store. They were quick and they add such a beautiful touch to the garden. I went to the store and grabbed some hula hoops along with black matte spray paint. I took the hoops out to my garden and decided to attach them to my house using small poultry staples. I then slipped a piece of pipe cleaner through the hole and attached the hoop, twisting the ends together. I used black electrical tape to join the hoops together. To attach the plant, I carefully moved each stem, bundling some together and following the curve of the hoop. I love the look of my new trellis and it was so easy to make. And as the plant grows, I can simply add additional hoops. Go ahead and grab yourself a tomato cage and also grab some wood shims. Grab a scrap board, take the thick end. We're gonna get a nice clean hole and we're gonna do this to all of our shims. What we're gonna do is take a towel and just dip it in there, make sure it's all covered. Just wipe it on there. The sticky points that go into the ground, we don't need those. It's just gonna snap right off. Now we're gonna grab us some copper wire. We're gonna put that through the shim with the hole in it. Just use it like a twist tie. Go all the way around. Once you get the second layer done, we're going to grab us a solar light from Dollar Tree. Take off that small part on the bottom, the stake. We don't need that. And let it float right in the middle. Now we're going to work on that last circle. And when the night starts to fall, watch this. That thing is going to light up. And you don't even have to turn it on or off. It works its magic automatically and recharges during the day. 
and I ran to my local Walmart and grabbed two matching pots, one bigger than the other. First thing I did was level an area in the front that would be in direct sunlight and put the bigger pot in first. Next, I grabbed an old bucket upside down into the bigger pot to make sure that it's centered. Next, I grabbed a flower pot base. I wanted to make sure that I turned it with the lip side down. We're gonna take the smaller pot that we got and place it on the center of that pot. I wanna grab some local rocks and place them around the edge. Next, I got out a new solar powered fountain that I bought for $10. It floats in the water because it's got a float on the bottom and it works great in direct sunlight. With this fountain comes some plastic spacers. What this does is make sure that the fountain stays in the center of the pot. Once you got it marked, you can go ahead and just trim it with a pair of scissors. Put some nice clear water inside. Go ahead and place the fountain inside. Once the direct sunlight hits it, voila, you've got a water fountain. The most amazing thing about this is it's solar powered. So you can place it anywhere in your yard that it gets direct sunlight. I headed down to a local Dollar Tree. I'll grab some rope, some clear bottles, and some cool little lights. Let's take the hook off the top of the light. Next, we're gonna take the bulb off. Next, we need to take the actual light mechanism and pop it out. What we need to do is paint this cover. Now on the bottle, we have a cork here. We can go ahead and just remove that. Next, I grabbed off of Amazon a bottle cutter. Put the bottle on the rollers and you go ahead and start turning it. What you want to do is hear this noise. That means you're cutting right through the bottle, but it won't cut all the way through. I'm going to show you a little cut line on there. Stick the bottle in the boiling water for a good 30 seconds. Once you got it in there and it's heated up, immediately go ahead and put it in the icy cold water. It's going to separate along the score line and look at that. Perfect. Takes off the bottom and you've got a nice, flat, smooth line. Put the lights back through our painted cover and clip it back on. Take some E6000 glue and place it around the edge. Take some hot glue and put it in the areas I didn't put the E6000 on. That's going to hold the cover in place while the glue is drying. I'm going to stick the lights inside the bottle, set the cover on top, then we're going to take that rope, stick some hot glue on the neck of the bottle, let that hold, and then we're going to start wrapping it all the way around the neck. And then take this extra twine, we're going to put it through the hook. I made three of these and we put them up and it made a perfect summer afternoon. To begin this project, choose your solar light set. Next, using half an inch by three-fourths inch board, measure and cut eight eight inch sections. Using a rod nailer, I secured these together, creating a square, but if you don't have access to this tool, you can always use a screw. Next, decide how long you want your light to be. We chose to use a one by two by 30 inch board. After sanding, find the middle of the board and mark off five points. We spaced ours five inches apart. Using a paddle bit, drill through the center of the board. After finding the center on the side piece and the length board, line them up and then secure. Once everything is square, measure your final four boards to make a hollow rectangle. Cut and secure these as you did the side squares. Finally, attach two eye hooks to either side to use for hanging. After my eye hooks were secure, I attached three feet of black chain link to each side of my chandelier. You can leave this raw wood and coat with a polyurethane to protect it from the outdoors, but I chose to use a satin black spray paint. Once my spray paint was dry, it was time to secure my solar lights. This took a little force, but warming up the plastic in the sun can make the tube more pliable. I chose to cut down my tubes, but this is of course personal preference. I have a pergola out back where I hung my new chandelier from two screw hooks. I absolutely love the new ambiance it creates, not only at nighttime, but it also adds a designer touch to my outdoor space. 